right now, like we're all feeling the way we're feeling because we're in the middle of it. Like it's happening. They've yeah. lost eight in a row. They're probably going to lose 11 in a row to end the season. But after game 82, how should we look back on this? Like, what is the way we should look back on this? Like, all right, we saw a team take some strides throughout most of the year. They played competitive against some of the best teams in hockey. They had a bunch of wins against the best teams in hockey. Mm -hmm. And then they ran out of gas at the end. Like, is it really like, I don't want to put all the meaning in the world into these last three games. I think it'll be but the way you yeah. broke it down. Like, no, man, if they're competitive in these last three, that changes my feeling about the entire year. And if they get blown the fuck out again, Two or three times. Yeah, if this is just it's torture, like oh, okay, it's over. Yeah, if this is like just this torture failed. for the next it's, 180 minutes, yeah. like that will impact my view of the season. I do think in a few weeks it will be significantly easier to look back at this yes. and and not like you can't completely remove this end stretch. But what you can do is you can look at the season as a whole. Like perfect example when I will do my you know summer reviews of each individual player one of the players I will review will be Joel Farabee. And I will look at Joel Farabee's full season stats. Now, hit those full season stats very much include the final two months when he played like crap, but they also will include the first four months when he played quite well. And then I will look at those numbers and be like, okay, what does this tell me about what his potential ceiling will be? Right now, it's real hard to do that because we're in the shit. We're in the thick of it. In a few weeks, it will be significantly easier to look at the 82 games as a whole. And like we can, there are some things we can take away from the 82 games as a whole that are undeniably awful. For example, the power play. There was not a point in the season where the power play was good, even when they were winning games. It's like a two game stretch. But <laughs> we will also be able to look at things like their five on five play and say, you know what? Even though the final three weeks of the year, they were having breakdowns and they were tired and the goalies couldn't stop a puck. On the whole, they were still a top 10 team in terms of scoring chance differential. And given the talent they have on the roster, that's pretty good. Right now, it's not worth talking about because you know what? You're in the shit and we're watching awful hockey at the worst possible time. So we have every right to be like, this is a disgrace. But... In two or three weeks, I do think it will be significantly easier to talk about the positives because there were positives. There are positives. Just let's just not talk about them now. And also, like Flyers you, don't deserve Tyson Fly, Forster. The Flyers really don't good. deserve like, no, not for right us now, to be talking mm -hmm. about the positives right I like now. They Tyson don't. Forster. He's good. I'm not mad at him. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, we also have to keep in focus the fact that we are now, for the first time in a very long time, dealing with a front office that appears to have an actual concrete plan about actually rebuilding this hockey team. We don't know yet if it's going to work. We, we have no way of knowing that. Nope. We don't know if they're good ideas or bad ideas. But if in two years we're looking at a team that is a playoff contender legit, and like let's say Tyson Forster is one of the main drivers of the team's success because he's moved along so much. Like, are we really going to look back at this season and be pissy about it? Probably not. Like, we have to remember that this is part of a bigger picture. Like, oh, yeah. This definitely. is not, like, no one put this roster together to win anything. No. So, like, maybe we all just need to chill out. Like, it's annoying because they overachieved. And for so much of this season, the playoffs were, like, right there. And it's the way that it's happening is that is it's what's the, annoying. It's the rolling yeah. over and dying. Yeah. That's what's... And, and, and against the teams that it's happened against. Yes. Right. But I, I do just kind of think that, like, the idea that this whole season is a bust, it just, I don't know, it's like two of a black and white conclusion to come to, and in we, my opinion. We did talk about this. Uh, this is when you were at, at WrestleMania. This was a Saturday night conversation. But me, Kelly, and JP did talk about this, about the true talent level of the team. And the point I made is that this, and I made the same point on What Chaos. I was on What Chaos today, Ooh. which is our all-city uh, national hockey show uh, with uh, DJ Bean and Pete Blackburn. Check that out. It's but really the, good. But the point I made was that the Flyers, as they stand right now, 
And by right now, I don't mean the 2020 through 2024 flyers. I mean Today. the flyers the April on, 2024. April, on yeah. April 10th. This is a true talent bad hockey team. And here is my explanation as to why they are a true talent bad hockey team. They don't have Sean Walker. They have whatever the hell is left of Sean Couturier. They have Cam York and Travis Sanheim run out of gas. They have Sam Harrison probably playing at about 70% of what he was two months ago. They have Travis Konechny probably playing through injury. Like, this Flyers team sucks. This team is probably, from a true talent standpoint, if you're taking into account fatigue and you're taking into account the fact that, like, they only got good Sean Couturier for the first half of the year and now he's not good, this, this team... This probably is a true talent bottom five team in the league. So maybe it's not that embarrassing that they're losing to other bottom five teams when true talent, where they are right now, is also a bottom five team. It sucks because they still found ways to do it against the good teams a few weeks ago. Now they're doing it against the bad teams. But maybe they just crossed the threshold. Like somebody made this point to me on Twitter, and it was a completely fair point that like maybe this team in a lot of ways kind of you know and goaltending is another big part of it maybe yeah. this team in a lot of ways the way it's constructed does kind of live or die with sean gaturi when sean gaturi was playing like a top six center this was a playoff team when sean gaturi was playing like a bottom six center who couldn't score any points at all they played like crap may is it that simple no but it's probably a better explanation than we think it is they don't have no. a top six center. Their top six center is Morgan Frost. Yeah, who like who like only plays half a year. Who got scratched ten times by January sixth. Like you know, like that's basically how it's gone for this. He's their best center. Uh, yeah. The coach didn't believe him for first half of the year, and their other best center is nowhere close to that anymore. But, but I so do like I do think that this team on April tenth yes. is a true talent, bad hockey team. Oh, yeah. But I don't think. The Flyer, the 2023-2024 Philadelphia Flyers were a true talent bad hockey team because at other points in the year, they were a true talent better team because they yeah. had a Sam Harrison who wasn't gassed. They had Selkie contender Sean Couturier. They had the Walker-Sealer pairing. They had York and Sanheim playing without having gotten 30 minutes a night for a month dumped on their plate. That team was pretty good. Not great. But pretty good. It's fine. This team yeah. sucks. Yes. We all city like the mayor.